We're excited to have you on Woodworking with Wes today. We have a real special project that we'd like to show you that we built. On a recent trip to Hawaii, my wife and I purchased some tropical hardwoods. Curly mango and black palm. And we made a memory box for our Hawaiian treasures. We're going to show you how we did it. Okay, we have our black palm cut into equal size strips. We're just going to put glue in there and clamp it up like that. And that's what we'll do next. We glue up, we wanna make sure we have good squeeze out all the way across. That tells us that we got enough glue. So as we clamp it, we'll watch and make sure we get squeeze out on all our seams. Looking good. And we'll put two clamps on one side. One clamp on the other side. That helps hold it flat also. And there you got our glue squeeze out all seams. So that means we have plenty of glue. Now we'll set that aside and wait for it to dry. We have our lid glued up, our black palm lid. After we glued it up, we measured and determined that the size of our box, in order to maximize the size of our lid, the size of our box needs to be 10 by 18. Being as we're mitering our corners, we need to have two 18 inch sides and two 10 inch ends on long point. Each one of these boards will be a side and an end and a side and an end and we have to have 28 inches. So we've got a little extra for our trim. So we're gonna be able to get the right size of box out of our pieces and our sides are going to be made out of this beautiful curly mango that we purchased. It's such a pretty wood. But anyway, we'll go over and we'll miter our ends and put our box together. And we'll show you how we do that now. The first thing we're going to do is put a square end on our sides. We'll do that with just a miter gauge on our saw. Then we'll set our saw at a 45 degree and then we'll cut our sides, 18 and 10, out of each one of our pieces. And we'll do all of that with just the miter fence or the miter uh, push fence and the saw set at 45. Okay, now we'll set our saw at 45. Okay, we want our sides, our long sides, to be 18. So we're gonna mark this here at 18 inches, and we're going to set our fence to have our miter cut come through right here at 18. Let's see how thick our wood is. We're right at just a little over three quarters, so we actually should be setting our saw at about 17 and a quarter inches. We'll get us fairly close. And we're gonna just set it a little long and check it. You can see how we've cut to the line. This will be our miter. We set our saw at 17 and 3 16 in order to make sure that we had 18 inches long point. We'll cut this side, then we'll just turn it around and run this sharp edge against the saw fence, also pushing with our miter, and uh, that will give us our 18 inch outside dimension, long point um, side. Okay, here are our sides, 18 inches, 
to the long point. Our miters are cut on both ends. And we're gonna do the same thing to get our 10 inch sides. And then we're ready to glue up. Okay, we set our saw at 17 and 3 16 to get 18. I set my saw at 9 and 3 16 Let's see if that gave us 10. Oh, I set it at 10 and 3 16 gave us 11. I got to take an inch off. I guess I should do that measure twice, cut once thing. I've always heard about that. There we go. See, every once in a while, we can do things right. Before we glue up our box, I marked the inside as I got ready to cut. I marked the inside with X's and we'll sand the inside because we won't be able to sand after we glue it up. And we'll show you how we're gonna glue it up. But first thing we'll do, sand the interior, then we'll set up and glue up. Okay, there we are, sanded on the inside, and then we'll show you how we're going to glue up here in just a second. Glue up our miters. Um, we're going to use uh, just tape. We're going to glue or uh, tape our joints together, and then roll them over and do it. Uh, do the glue on it. Uh, a little trick is to lay a straight edge out. Put your boards on the straight edge, and put your joint up against it, like that. Then put your tape on it. And that helps hold your box square. So let's uh, let's put our tape on, and we're going to glue our box up all up all at the same time. So we'll start off here, first glue joint, we'll put our tape on, and our next joint. Put a couple of pieces on this to kind of pull this one a little bit tight here because I gotta pull this joint together before I put the tape on it. There, like that. Now we'll put the full length piece on it. Okay, and then we'll move our piece of wood down here. Tape up our last piece, same thing, we're going to put a cross piece on here to pull that little joint together a little bit, and now we'll put the long piece on it. Okay, whatever. One other thing I did is you'll notice I marked an X on each one of my pieces. I determined which I wanted to be the bottom of my box and my top. And so these are the bottoms. When we roll it over and we glue it up, now we know we have our top and our bottom all together. And we're just going to roll this over like this. We'll set our straight edge out of the way. And we'll run a little bit of glue in each one of our corners. We don't want to over glue, but we also don't want to under glue. This is going to be what holds the box together. And so we want to make sure we get enough glue, but we don't want to make a mess on the inside of our box either. So a little glue all the way down in the corner. And we'll roll that up, and then we'll roll that up. And then we've got to put some glue on this last seam. So we'll put some glue out here. And we'll roll 
this up. Tape this seam. And there's our box. Now one of the things we want to do right away is to check for square. Oh, we're good. It's almost like we knew what we were doing. Let's check the inside too. Oh yeah. Very nice. Okay, we'll let that dry. When that dries, we'll sand the outside. We'll put a bottom on it, then we'll make our feet. But the first thing we'll probably do is put our splines together. Oh, we got a joint coming apart here a little bit. I'm gonna put some extra tape on that. I'm gonna put an extra clamp on here by putting a little tape across this way. This way, don't pull that corner. For some reason, that corner was pulling apart. Let's check again for square now that we've done that. And we're still good and square. Okay, and we'll set that gently aside and let it gently dry. Okay, now we'll wait for our glue to dry and continue on our box. Okay, we're getting back to work on our box. We took our blue tape off after our glue dried and we sanded the outside of our blocks so that we're ready to work on that. We also took our mango, I mean our uh, black palm top that we had talked about that was warped and we cut it into smaller sections and we've glued those together. Now we're ready to run that through the wide belt sander and flatten that up, that up again. The first thing we're going to do though is we're going to take it to our saw and we're going to cut some splines in the corner um, to give it some decoration. Now to get to cut some splines I'm going to show you what a little jig that we made for our table saw sled that allows us to do that. We're getting ready to put some splines in the edges of in our edge of our mango box. We're going to be using a piece of uh, Peruvian black walnut. I just happen to have a piece laying around. We're going to use this dark material for our spline, so it's going to really make a nice decoration. But when you cut a spline, you have to cut it at an angle, and we needed to make an addition to our table saw sled so that we could hold our box at a corner. And so we made this little addition, a little 45 degree angle addition to our table saw sled that we can clamp in and lay our box in and run through our saw and cut our splines. And that's what we're going to do next. We're going to take this over to the table saw. We're going to cut our splines. We're going to cut two splines in every corner and then we're going to come back and glue in our spline and then we'll, when that dry, while that's drying we'll work on our lid. We're over here at our table saw getting ready to cut our splines. I did a little layout on the edge of my box to show where I want them. We're going to put a foot on our box and our foot is going to come up this high. And I wanted to center my splines equally along what was left over after the foot is installed. So, and I want my splines to be 3 eighths of an inch wide. So I measured making this distance equal. This is where our top is going to be. This is where our foot's going to be. And our spline is going to be 3 eighths of an inch wide. We've set up our angle on our table saw sled and we've set our stop to get ready to make our first cut. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut all of our splines now and then put them in. And we're going to use our table saw sled. We put a double uh, blade dado set in there so that we can cut our spline. And that's how we're going to get it all set up right now. We're going to go ahead and do that all now first and then glue in our spline. Okay, where our splines are now cut, all four corners, and our jig worked just exactly like we had planned. 
This is the stop we use. We just move the stop around to our different measurements. Our foot will be down here, our lid will be here, and our splines will be easy, evenly measured. So let's go glue in our splines. Okay, while our splines are drying, we're gonna take our black palm glue up that we now is going to end up being our lid. We're gonna take that over and run it through our wide belt sander and flatten it up and even it up and then get ready to have the top all done. So that's the next thing we'll do. go do. Go to the wide belt sander, sand our black palm top. Our splines that we glued in are dry. We're going to take our Japanese saw and cut our splines off and sand the outside of our box and then we'll move on to the feet. So that's the next step. We've sanded our box 80 grit and 120. Now all we have to do is sand 150. And then we're going to apply just a quarter inch plywood bottom and then install the feet. So we'll do the final sand, put the bottom on and go from there. We're getting ready to put our foot piece on our box, but I wanted to go over a little bit about how I did this. I had some little pieces of curly mango left over to match our box and we glued a piece, a strip of this uh, Peruvian walnut that we used for our spline so it matched on the bottom. And then I marked a center line and figured a little arch in there. And so this is how I figured my little arch there. My center line um, determined by, by writing my center line through, I centered my arch on the side of my box. Now after I got done putting my arch on there, I put an OG route across the top, and then I put a one by three eighths rabbit on the back side. And I'll show you how this fits on the box, but this is what we started with. This how it is how it ends up. And I'll show you how it looks when it's on the box. This is just a dry fit. But that's how our foot is going to look on our box right there. So you, the decorative dark shows through and we have a nice little foot piece on here. We've got to sand all this and, and attach it. That's what we'll do next. We'll get that all done. And then all we have left is the lid and then we'll move on to the lid. But let's go ahead and get the foot put on there all the way around and sand it in. And then we'll work on the top. I have installed my foot piece on two sides and now I'm getting ready to put the other two sides on. I have mitered one edge but not the other edge. I've marked it where it should be but what I want to do is put it on here and mark it exactly where it needs to be just in case there might be some some inconsistencies in the box. I want to mark this so that this final corner comes out perfect. And I've done the same thing on my other long side here. I've mitered the corner back here and left this side open so that I can miter this corner to fit. That way my corners come out the very best. And if there's any little inconsistencies, this all gets sanded and so the corners get sanded out. We're going to sand this corner up here and smooth out the, the sharp edge before we put the top on. But that's the reason I leave my final corner to the very last is so that I can cut to fit. We're getting ready to put our final piece on. I'll just show you how we attach it. I put a little bit of glue along in my rabbit and I glued my mitered ends. We'll put it in there and slid it on and got it good and tight. And I just attached it with a few 
23 gauge headless pins. Pulled my corners together. We'll putty these holes with some maple putty, which is the closest to this color. And then we'll do our sand and sand out all our burn marks and our pencil marks. And the bottom part of our box will be done. While we're waiting for our putty to dry on our foot that we just installed, we're going to go ahead and cut our lid to size and get ready to do it. This is black palm. Um, earlier in the video you saw how we cut and glued this together. Now you can see it all sanded out and how nice it looks. It's such a pretty wood and it's very heavy. It weighs almost as much for the lid as it does for the whole box. Mango is kind of a light wood, but this black palm is very, very heavy. Anyway, we're going to cut this to size. This lid is just going to be a lid that sets on top um, like this. We're going to put a little rabbit on the bottom and we're going to put an OG edge just like this around the top. And so it'll have a matching OG edge and it'll have a, a little rabbit on the bottom so that it fits in tight to the, to the box itself. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut it to size. Then we're going to put the uh, OG on and then the rabbit. Well, we're all done in the paint shop. We just sprayed our final coat of high gloss finish on our black palm and curly mango memory box. It's been a fun project and we look forward to seeing you next time on Woodworking with Wes.